11 bad habits of every new bloodhound. Not optimizing your settings for bloodhound. There's three specific settings that you can change to improve your overall gameplay as a bloodhound main. First, you want to disable FOV ability scaling. What FOV ability scaling does is it zooms out your FOV when you're in your ultimate. As you can see here, you can see all six targets on screen. When I hit my ultimate, the camera is going to zoom outwards to a maximum FOV. While this adds a cinematic effect, making your movements feel a lot faster and giving you a large FOV, it isn't consistent with your normal walking around FOV. And on top of that, it makes it harder to see targets at distance and makes targets smaller overall, making it harder to hit. Next is using a colorblind mode. As you can see in the previous clip, the highlighted enemy was blue instead of red. I'm personally a red green colorblind and so is a significant portion of the population. So if you feel like you have issues fighting inside of ring, heat shields, or heavily wooded areas, changing your colorblind mode to Protonopia may be a game changer for you. Let's say that we have a reticle color on default with no colorblind mode. Those of you who aren't red green colorblind, let me know in the comments if you can see the reticle because I sure can't. Even if your reticle isn't on the target in your ultimate, it's very hard to see with this dark background in contrast with the red. So whether you use a colorblind mode or not, I highly recommend finding a reticle color that contrasts the red or blue as well as the shaded background. I'll use this yellow as an example. Now, as you can see, whether I'm on red or using a colorblind mode, my reticle is much more visible whenever I'm in my ultimate. However, you do want to keep in mind when you're in close range engagements, you want to focus on your enemy and not your reticle, but it's still good to have it as a point of reference. Landing on low ground or high risk buildings, specifically in ranked. As Bloodhound, you have to understand your strengths and weaknesses. Bloodhound does not have a small hitbox. On top of that, you have one of the largest head hitboxes of any legend. And you also don't have any ability to get you out of trouble, specifically off drop. So when landing with your team, make sure that you prioritize the safer buildings and the buildings on high ground. Then in return for getting those buildings, supply your teammates with scans, using the wrong weapons and ADSing too often when you're in your ultimate. As a general rule of thumb in Apex Legends, whenever you ADS your weapon, there's going to be a penalty on your movement speed. This is no exception with Bloodhound's ultimate speed boost. You should try to avoid using LMGs and snipers as they have the largest movement penalty of any weapon in the game. You can mitigate this by hip firing, but overall I would recommend staying with assault rifles, SMGs, pistols, and shotguns. Pistols have absolutely no penalty, this actually includes the Mozambique, and shotguns and SMGs only have a 10% penalty. However, when it comes to speed, 10% is pretty significant. So when it comes to shotguns and SMGs, always try to prioritize hip fire, with the one exception being the Mastiff. With the Mastiff, you always want to ADS as the spread is much tighter when you aim down sights. Here's an example of your strafe speed with an LMG wall inside of your ultimate, and then here's an example of your strafing speed with an SMG wall in your ultimate. My personal recommendation is a close range weapon and a medium range weapon. Personally, I would go with the car and the wingman. The car you could replace with any shotguns or other SMGs, and the wingman you could replace with either an R301 or a flatline. Being lazy with the information that you gain from your abilities, you should be communicating every single bit of information that you gain, even the little things such as recent footsteps. That way your team knows to be on guard and won't get caught off guard if there's a team nearby. On top of that, you need to learn to read silhouettes of the legends that you scan. You'll be able to see what legend they are, the abilities you're going against, as well as possibly even the weapons that they're using. And don't just rely on the number of enemies scanned. Make sure that you can visually notate where all of them are at and communicate that to your team. Not fully understanding the range of their ping. Bloodhound's ping feels like it has almost an unlimited vertical scan distance. So never hesitate to scan above you to see if there's people on high ground. While it's common knowledge that their scan reaches up to 75 meters, it's good to keep in mind for knowing how much area was cleared by your scan. On top of that, it never hurts to ping a location to make sure that your scan is going to reach that far. That way you don't get a false reading that area is clear. Lastly, remember that your scan goes out in a cone shape, not a dome around you. So if you're too far into the fight and you hit a scan, it's not always going to scan enemies on each side of you. Always scanning before your ultimate without knowing the situation. While it is a common and useful tip as it basically gives you a free scan before using your ultimate, there are a few situations where you don't want to scan before your ultimate. An example would be approaching a team that doesn't know where you're at or approaching a third party. Some people are afraid to pop their ultimate to alert a team because of the loud audible noise, which you do want to be careful with. However, specifically in the third party scenario, there's going to be a lot of gunfire and explosives going off that may cover up the sound of your ultimate. However, if you scan first, every single person on both teams is going to get an on-screen warning that they've been scanned. And a lot of the times those two teams will separate and you'll now be the focus of both teams. So understand your situation and weigh the pros and cons of giving away your position through audio or visual cue. And make sure that you don't pop your ultimate too soon. You don't want to waste five seconds of your ultimate just running to the fight. And if you're enjoying the tip so far, make sure you drop a like on the video. Next, we've got scanning in unsafe positions. Specifically in your ultimate, it seems like a good idea to spam your ability. Whenever you scan, you actually put your gun away and it can cancel reloads or any type of heals or actions that you were doing prior. So make sure anytime you scan, you're playing some form of cover and you don't have a person directly firing at you. This 
This seems like common sense, but it's really easy to get caught up in the loop of scanning every second you get, and it might put you in a bad situation. A general rule of thumb is don't scan in a location that you wouldn't try to reload or heal. Not using your scans as a defensive measure. Most people see scans as an aggressive way of gathering information, which it is. But on top of that, it's a great way to gather defensive information as well. Say that an enemy cracked your shield or a teammate's shield. Using your scan before you hit your heal can allow you to have that three second scan while you try to pop your battery and understanding if you have the time to get off your battery or if they're pushing a teammate, you may be able to catch that pushing enemy out in the open, punish them. This is also true when your teammates are resing. That scan made by you just enough time to get the res off or punish an enemy in a bad position. Not using your scans to assert dominance. This is similar to using your scans to gather defensive information, but instead of gathering information, you're simply using the scan to let a team know that you're there. This may seem kind of silly, but especially in high level ranked, if a team doesn't know that you're there, they may accidentally walk up on you or make a dumb play. By constantly scanning teams, you're keeping them in check, letting them know that, hey, I know where you're at. And if you choose to push us, you're at a disadvantage. Very rarely is a team going to try to take a power position from you when you're constantly scanning them and know their exact whereabouts. Not fully utilizing the speed that you gain from your ultimate. A lot of people fixate on constantly scanning while on their ult and undervalue the speed. The speed can be one of the greatest tools for repositioning. You can use it to climb faster, pop it when you're overextended to get back to your team, or take a different angle. You can even use it to escape a closing ring. However, I only recommend doing that if it's ring three or beyond, or you're low on health heals. You're also the only character that's fast enough to chase down a stimming octane, so do with that as you will. Before we get to the final and one of the most common bad habits, if you feel like you never have anyone to play with and you're sick of randoms, or you just want to chat with me or my community and ask questions directly, feel free to join our Discord. I'll make sure to include in the description below. On the note of chasing down stim octanes, it's a bad habit of getting too aggressive or tunnel vision in your ultimate. You are extremely fast and your team cannot keep up with you, and getting too far ahead of them is going to put them in a bad situation where they feel like they have to back you up. So make sure that you keep tabs on your teammates and communicate as you're in your ult. On top of that, you don't have to fully commit to fights. Poke and win small damage trades, peeking different angles instead of committing to the one mag. You're one of the fastest characters in the game, and if you take unpredictable routes, they'll never see it coming. Lastly, don't overswing. Their speed can be a lot to handle, so make sure that you're always playing around some kind of cover, especially towards the end of your ultimate. You don't want to be caught out in the open with the ultimate running out. And while your strafe is very fast, a strafing bloodhound on a corner peak is going to be much more effective than one out in the open. As a closing note, you're fast, but you're not invincible.